Well, I don't know who Puffy pissed off, but um, yeah, it's that time. Welcome back to the channel, y'all. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and let's get right into this one. Hit that subscribe button, please. Listen, is it me, or could it be over for Puffy, P. Diddy Combs, Dr. Love, or Brother Love, or whichever name you choose to use, Diddy, Sean P. Diddy Combs has filed his first legal response to allegations that he sex trafficked and then gang raped a 17 year old girl in 2003. Before I go into this piece of material right here, let me just say, once the Cassie stuff came out, they settled it too quickly. And I know they had their reasons behind the scenes why they settled it, because Cassie was about to blow the roof off that mother and they didn't want certain things out in the open right whether those things were true or not but that was the first mistake settling so quickly without a fight with Cassie and then came the rest so in case you have missed it quite a few other allegations have came up with Puffy's name on it following the Cassie incident he has now filed a legal response to the allegations of gang raping a 17 year old girl in 2003. In their filings, Puffy's legal team tell the federal courts that the allegations are fictional and that they violate his constitutional rights to due process. Let's get into the details of this. The lawsuit was filed in December. It was one of several abuse cases that were filed against Puffy last year. In this lawsuit, a unnamed person just listed as Jane Doe, the accuser, claimed that Puffy and former Bad Boy Records president Harvey Peer gave her a whole lot of drugs and alcohol before raping her in a Manhattan recording studio when she was a high school junior. Oh, shit. But... In his formal response to the lawsuit, attorneys for Puffy tells the federal court on Tuesday that those things never happened, man. It's all made up. He never participated in it. He never witnessed it or was or is presently aware of any misconduct, sexual or otherwise relating to this particular Jane Doe person, any circumstances whatsoever. In other words, his response, his defense is, I didn't see nothing, I didn't hear anything, and I know nothing at all. This person is fabricating all of this, completely making all this up. We have no relations. Now, he has a prominent entertainment litigator, Sean Holly. This is Puffy's attorney. And Sean Holly not only argues that the allegations are false, but he also calls them unconstitutional. His explanation is that they say that the statute cited in the lawsuit, New York City's Victims of Gender Motivated Violence Protection Law, is itself unconstitutional on its face. And that his accuser's decision to wait more than two decades to come forward with all this has actually cost Puffy the ability to be able to defend himself fully and fairly. For example, some or all of the evidence that otherwise would have been available if the action had been promptly, you know, taken care of, some of that may be available or that might be lost or compromised at this point. Now, the attorney also wrote, the absence of evidence materially impacts defendant's ability to defend against essential aspects of plaintiff's claims, witness identification, availability, and recollection are likely compromised due to the substantial passage of time since the alleged incident. Now, I mean, how many of us can remember word for word, detail for detail, a particular incident from 20 
years ago. Not many people can. But of course, many people are triggered who have been through situations where this actually happened to them. And if the person is saying that they were drugged and they were given a whole lot of alcohol on top of drugs, I mean, in all fairness, were you or are you able to remember every detail of what took place 20 years ago? Anyhow, the lawyer for Puffy also says that the case violates the so-called doctrine of clean hands, meaning that the accuser actually filed the lawsuit in bad faith. Now, in making that argument, they said that the lawsuit alleges an entirely fictional account that never occurred. They also argued that the photos that were cited by the accuser in her complaint, those photos could be fake, disputing the context, the genuineness, and or the accuracy of those images. So not saying that the photos were photoshopped, but saying that the photos could be taken out of context. For instance, if you came to Puffy's studio to record back in the day 20 years ago and you were starstruck and you're like, oh my God, that's Puffy. Can I get a picture with him? And he's like, yeah, come on over. And you sat on his lap and you took a picture and you held that picture for 20 years. And then 20 years you show up in court and you said, I was raped in the studio while he was there making music, whatever. And I have a picture to prove it. And you pull that same picture up and you said, this is the picture. See, I was there. It happened. That's not putting things into context. That's just saying you were there and you took a picture with him. But that still does not explain what your accusation is like proof that it did happen the way you said it did now that's what the attorneys are saying which is very true now puffy was hit with a whole bunch of abuse claims late last year first in the form of you know the explosive allegations of abuse and rape and stalking and all this weird behavior and that came from cassie r&b singer and longtime romantic partner cassie Cassie quickly settled, but Puffy was then sued by two other women who says that they were also sexually assaulted and then hit with the current case after that one where the gang rape stuff came out. Damn. So after, after Cassie's story, Puffy has three more on his head right now. He's already strongly denied all allegations. And this has cost him a lot in the process. Now, in a statement in December, he said that I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. And I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. In her complaint, Jane Doe claimed that she met Pierre at the D Detroit club in 2003 when she was just a junior in high school after he smoked some crack cocaine he sexually assaulted me by forcing me to give him some head she says he flew her to New York on Puffy's private jet to visit Puffy in his Manhattan recording studio after that now Everybody is saying, yo, you met a man, he smoked some crack, coke, dope, and then forced you to, you know what I mean, go down and then put you on a private jet. Um, was there a gun involved, a knife involved? Were you kidnapped? What the hell was going on? But check it. This is also trafficking because you put a minor on an airplane and transport them to a whole nother city or state without parental consent. It gets ugly. And it is at this point where all the sponsors and all the people who worked with Puffy put millions and millions of dollars into his business ventures. They just started backing out. 
They just started dropping him. They just started severing ties with him. He started stepping down as head honcho of all his business ventures, whether he was forced to by other partners who were involved, who started saying, listen, your, your record, your face is not clean right now. And we can't have you be the face of this company anymore because, you know, um, we don't want the company to burn because of you. You know, the company is bigger than you are. There are other people here involved who got to feed their families off of this. Revolt is one big example. Now, while at the studio, Miss Doe said she was gang raped by Puffy, the third assailant and Mr. Peer in that order. Puffy went first. Another person was there who went second and Peer went third. She remembers this in sequence as in how they did it. The lawsuit claims that the unnamed man who went, did that to Miss Doe, she told him to stop. And then Pierre forced her to give him some oral, during which Miss Doe says she was choking and she was struggling to breathe. Now, after the attack, the lawsuit says that the accuser could barely stand up after three men had ran through her and had to be helped to walk out of the building and back into a car. She says that she was then flown back to Michigan and dropped off. This doesn't sound good at all. I mean, damn. You know, that's the last thing you want to have your name called on. Also, on Tuesday, Pierre has now filed his own formal response to this lawsuit saying he never participated in any sexual assault of this plaintiff, nor did he ever witness anyone else sexually assaulting this plaintiff. Two corporate entities named in the lawsuit, Daddy's House Recordings Inc. and Bad Boy Entertainment Holdings Inc. also asked to be dismissed from the case, arguing that they could not be held liable for any alleged wrongdoing by Peer and by Combs. In a statement to Billboard on Wednesday, Jane Doe's lawyer sharply rejected the argument from Puffy's lawyers. The deeply troubling allegation against the defendant by multiple women speaks for itself, is what he's saying. In other words, he's trying to say, all these people coming out saying the same story can't be telling lies, you know? If one person, yeah, maybe, but back to back to back, and these people don't even know each other. The ridiculous claim that the photos are somehow fake and the lawsuit at issue is unconstitutional has nothing more than desperate attempts to conjure up a defense where none exists. In other words, Jane Doe's attorney is saying, Puffy has no defense against this. First of all, that was a minor that was in that studio in those photos with you my man and how did that minor get there without parental consent when that studio is not located in the city or state that that minor lives in so how the hell did that minor reach there only way that minor could have gotten there was through a road trip or by flight so it goes with the story that the minor said, because that was a minor at the time, junior in high school. The minor said, I was put on an airplane, a private jet that belonged to Puffy, and I was taken there. And then has the picture to prove that they were taken there. Now, the minor, the person, Jane Doe, doesn't have any pictures, of course, of the assault happening. But what was the purpose of flying a minor out? And then returning them to the city. And how the hell would she have gotten that photo in that particular studio had she not been there? So if your defense is it never happened. I don't know what you're talking about. We were never there. I didn't see anything. That's a weak defense. Leave your comments in the comment section below. I need to know what you think about this. Do you think that Sean Puffy P. Diddy Combs, Brother Love, do you think that he is over? This is the end of one of the most powerful men in modern day music. Notice I didn't say black men. 
one of the most powerful men in modern day music. I didn't say rap music. He is one of the most powerful gatekeepers. Do you think that we're witnessing his fall? Or do you think that he will rise again from this? And do you believe that this accusation from Jane Doe is actually true? I'll catch y'all on the next video. Stay safe out there. And remember, what you do today might come back to haunt you tomorrow. So try your best to keep it squeaky clean. It's Brain Flow TV, better known as Hot Topics TV. And you already know, if the topic is hot, we're on it. I'm out. Peace.